Okay, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'll talk about uh, how to reduce your head and total cost of ownership. So this is going to be agenda. How can the Temi video quality leadership, then how to save through better compression, saving through your infrastructure, new technologies and partnership. So let's talk, start talking about ATEM. Uh, just a quick refresh. Uh, ATEM is a public company since 2014, but we operate in, uh, in the whole world. We have uh, operations in 18 countries uh, with uh, local support and sales guys. We also have almost 30 years of expertise in video compression and video delivery. So ATEM is a company that develops software delivery and software, uh, software video compression. Uh, targeting for live or on-demand video delivery while preserving the picture quality. Uh, what we have, what we offer, we offer a Titan solution, which is um, capable of receiving whichever uh, we talk about on, uh, on terms of input. It can be like some arc input, some play out, some file, some live streams, uh, uh, contribution inputs, wherever. And then we can deliver that for whatever the format that you need on the output, like OTT, IPTV, DTH, wherever. Um, so uh, we at the TAM, we have a dedicated team just for video processing. What those guys do, we have more than 10 experts. We always, every year, we increase the number of guys there. So the guys, they all have to uh, improve our um, codec quality, our implementation quality of the codec, we always optimize the video quality, we always optimize the algorithms, uh, we are always uh, working also with uh, the new technologies, we have advanced research on machine learnings, on uh, artificial intelligence, we contribute with the new standards, we have, uh, we follow all, all standards uh, forum like the SMPT, DVB, etc. So we are part of all forums. We have some, we have innovative team just to follow the new standards, the new um, codecs. And also we have a video processing team just focused on VQ improvement. Those things, they work close. And also we have more teams for like the old R&D guys, which works on other features and improvements on the overall platform. But we have this dedicated team just for video quality. So, uh, this team, this the rule is to improve and, um, and research how we can um, adapt new, adapt and use new tools for improving video quality. I have uh, some examples of the tools that we use uh, to improve the this quality and and to uh, improve the quality of every codec that we have. Not only, I mean, we don't uh, we, everything that we do for every improvement that you got for one specific profile codec, we can adapt and, 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 and use that same improvement on other types of codecs. So we have some tools that we use uh, internally uh, that we use to improve the quality of uh, the image. But I wanted to mention as uh, this new psycho visual mode that we have for, as an example of those tools. Uh, we had a former psycho visual model this model, we use it to have the same amount of uh, bitrate spread on the, the full image. So you, you had the quality, the overall quality, uh, but it was not maximized. It was okay, you could see everything that you needed to see. The, as example, the soccer game, you could see the grass, you could see the audience, you could see the scores. But we, we, we thought that it we could improve that, it could be much better. So we focused on trying to improve where uh, the human eye was focused. So as when we are watching a soccer game, we focus more on the players, on the ball, on, on the grass, on the field, and not so much on the, the audience. So with this, uh, this new model, we could improve the quality of what we, what the human eye perceives. So we have much more bitrate on the field itself than on, on, on the audience. I, 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 I don't mean that um, 
the audience will not it will be a, a bad image you have the same quality as we, you you had uh, before but as we are focusing on the best perceptual quality that we could deliver for the, our customer so the idea was to put more um more bitrate on the texture on the grass on the players on uh, every detail that we can perceive with our eyes because we are focused on on that part so we can still um keep the logos we can still keep the scores but we have an overall uh, perception of improvement on this so this applies for every codec that we have and these are already available from the titan live um why is it important to have a, a team dedicated to improve the video quality to improve the video compression because most of the use case that you have today are let's say limited uh, i thought uh, i'll get a, an example cable uh, dth and dtt for instance uh you have a limited bw bw have a limited bandwidth or a, li a limited number of transponders that you can use but you always need to put more content on it or you always need to in case of cable sometimes you need to 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 have more uh more space for other services than video so uh usually the the pain points are almost the same in this case if you need to have more channels you cannot go and just okay i need a new transponder or i need a new a new frequency you need to increase your density but usually when you increase your density you lose you lose uh you lose quality so if you have a better compression and i mean a better compression is not a better uh, uh something will compress more and give uh, uh, worse results i mean if you have a better compression you can compress more have more intelligence on the compression side so you see the same quality on the on your deliver or even a better quality with less bitrate so for those cases you could also you could have more channels on each one you could free some transponders you could uh, start new services on it for instance and also for um, another example for ott where you can have more uh, bitrate you can have more services it's easier to, to expand that but it has a cost you have a cdn cost so as soon as as long as you have a better uh, encoding uh, a, a better encoding process you can save a lot of bandwidth and you can save a lot of opex on this as an example we had a a we have a customer is a dth operator from western europe they have six responders with sdn hmp4 channels the typical lineup is 27 channels per transponder so what we did in this case we got their input the content production the content current in production we got the same content we did um the encoding through our titan solution using stat MOOCs and then we had uh, we had a vq analysis we we measured the psnr and we we had some side by side videos comparing our encoder with their current production uh in this case this customer they had like 20% 20% of bandwidth savings what is this this is an opportunity to save like one transponders and then they could return this transponder or they could add more channels to design up or even launch some new 3d channels so they could with the same uh, the same bitrate the same number of uh, uh, the same bw the same uh, transponders the same bitrate that they have they could increase the number of channels usually this is something uh, that we see every day every every operator is increasing the number of channels or trying to launch new new channels but they don't have space for that so as soon as you have a better compression tool you can have you can keep like uh you can improve your quality to your customer or you can add more channels keeping the same quality and keeping the same quality without including more channels means that you can include new kinds of services you could have some U3TG or in the case of cable operator can free some some frequency for IP and uh, there's another example it's a cable 
this one is a cable operator for and it operates with MPEG-2. They have 16 channels. They had 16 channels per QAM, and we had the same uh, the same um, the same approach. We got the the production. We had the comparison with it. This is for MPEG-2, and in this case, we could have we had 25% of uh, bandwidth savings. So even if this is MPEG-2, we could improve it because we everything that we do for 8264 of HVC, we can apply for MPEG-2. So every decision tool that we have, that we make and that we improve on our uh, video compression team, we can apply to all codecs. So uh, even if MPEG-2 is not, <laughs> it's an old codec, let's call it like that, we can still improve it. So in this case, the customer, he could uh, free some, some KM uh, and then could launch more services on, on other, on, 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 like they could add more services. In this case, they could add up to, they could add four services um, for KM or they could have, they could, they could keep the, the same quality or adding one or two more channels, improving the quality and add, adding some other type of service like a U3G or something like that. And another example, this is a CDN for, for the OTT uh, use case. We had some CDN sa savings. We have a, a telco operator, he launched the OTT service five years ago. They have, a, they have 20K titles on their catalog. This is a VOD catalog. And just by using our Titan MPEG-4, our solution, we could decrease the number, that we could decrease the bitrate that they were using, keeping the same uh, profiles ladder. So they were using nine profiles with 30 megabits. We could save almost 8% or 7.5% just by replacing their current um, uh, encoding with a TEM encoder, MPEG-4 encoder. Uh, this is this was made without applying any other of uh, any other um, uh, advanced feature that we have on our encoders. Just the pure MPEG-4 encoder that we have, and then we went further on this. We did we did this first part. Okay, we can keep the same profiles. We can save a little bit of um, of our bitrate. In this case, we also did uh, the comparison. Uh, we, for instance, I'll, I'll get the first profile, the 1080 profile, the 1080 profile. We did uh, some tests, like encoding 8.8, 8.6, 8.4, 8.3, and, and then we did the comparison with the customer, so they could choose which one uh, he thought it was best to use, was the better, the, the best to use, and also we had some uh, PSNR uh, comparison on it. And then we went further. We have our content adaptive, adaptive streaming. Um, this is a, 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 a feature set that we have that's divided, that's split in three parts, three paths. The first one is profiles. The second one is the bitrate. And the third one is the chunking. The first one, the profile. What do we have? We have a tool that we can, uh, we analyze a lot of uh, assets and base it on their um, complexity, we developed a PKA index, so we can we can know um, we can we can um, we can put a score on a on a type of asset and the, based on its complexity. So we can uh, dynamically choose the best profile ladder uh, for that uh, for that uh, asset. So if uh, we can, if let's say if it's a movie or if a soccer game or a TV show, we can choose the best, um, uh, the best profiles and bitrate that to give the customer the, the best uh, possible uh, uh, experience uh, when he was he he will he will be watching that. Also for the bitrate, we have a constant quality rate feature. On, on which we will allocate the bits on the more complex sense and on the easy sense that they don't need much bits, 
we will not use that much of uh, bitrate for that. So um, in case you have like a, a fade to black or something like that, you don't need to use like 10 megabits on that send. You can go like one megabit, two megabits. And when um, we have an explosion and the profile is 10 megabits, we might use the 10 megabits to, to encode that send. And there's a third one, which is the dynamic chunking. Um, when we talk about chunking for OTT delivery, we have we have to start a, a, a chunk with an IDR frame. So sometimes uh, we just finish a chunk with an iframe and the iframes are the, the largest one. So the, the ones that needs more bit rate. So what, what we do in this case, instead of keeping the chunks, uh, the, the, the length of the chunks the same, we can, okay, in the, with uh, like the example, in nine seconds, I need to have a iframe. Can I put an IDR here and close these chunks? Yes, we can do that. So we can save that amount of bit that we would like uh, use on the end of a chunk. And then in like one or two frames, we would have, we would need that uh, amount of bits again. So we can close that chunk there and we keep, uh, we keep, uh, encoding the other and creating the other chunks. In this case, you could have like the minimum and maximum duration of each chunk. So the encoder can have, um, can choose between this interval. Uh, on this slide, I presented what I told for the first part, the encoding one. So we have this, we have, uh, we, analyze, we analyze more than 10,000 assets. We build this, uh, this uh, database of VQ index. So based on the input that we have, we can choose and tell uh, which is the best codec that the best, um, not codec, the best um, encoding ladder that you should use, the profiles and the bitrate for each kind of content. This is applicable more for uh, VOD, for offline content. Uh, for online, for live content, you usually uh, use the same idea, the same, um, same index based on the live input, but we don't do live uh, change off on the profiles. So if you have a sports channel, we know that we could use uh, a set of, uh, um, a set of uh, profiles and, and bit rates that we could apply for that kind of content. So we, we, we suggest that to, to the customer. This is an example of the CQ, CQR, the constant quality rate feature. So in this case, the left image was the CBR, the normal CBR content with five megabits. Uh, the second one, the the right, the no, the left, the other, the right one, is the one with the CQR feature. In this case, you can see that you have the same quality on both images. However, the image to, to your right is the one that you are applying the CQR. It's using only the the, the bitrate that it needs. To, to, to deliver that send. And in this case, you are saving almost 50% of the bit rate just in one send. And you see the same content, the, both images have the same quality. So this is uh, an important tool to, to save, uh, to save uh, for, 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 for instance, for a CDN delivery. And now when we apply all the features, all those features, we could go from the nine profiles to eight profiles. We had some changes on bitrate and we were saving 30% on, uh, on, on bitrate. So 30, okay, 30% is a nice number, but how can we check that in, in numbers, in, in, in amount, in, in, in dollars? So we had a, some assumptions for like, Okay, these uh, the assumptions can can change from 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 country and from CDN provider, but usually if I have uh, one cent per per gigabit, I have these four four dollars per month for of storage. The catalog size of that customer was 20 k items. Um, usually they have one thousand views per month. And the duration of it, uh, if, if each, uh, each uh, content, if it's around 60 seconds, we did some calculations here. So usually in production, the customer 
was used to pay in like 1.1 million dollar per month just to applying the impact for the our encoder and our impact for encoder it decreased to it decreased in 9 90k and also when you talk about having all the features we could have 356 thousand dollars monthly of savings just by applying just by changing um the encoding provided the encoding the encoding capacity uh let me move also we can we have some um we have some some white papers that you can you can you can download from the theme website Please feel free to, to visit the, the TEM website and you find these, these, uh, these studies and much more information on the white papers. And now moving to saving through your infrastructure. Okay, uh, we are talking about a software, a pure software solution. A pure software solution, agnostic hardware, agnostic cloud, uh, cl a cloud diagnostic one, a hardware diagnostic one. So usually what we see on a normal head end, the common head end, unusual head end, is that you have some silos. You have a lot of IRDs delivering some SDI or maybe IP for the encoders. Uh, and then you have, if you have SDI, you have some log inserters, you have some audio loudness control, and then you go to the encoder, you have a lot of multi viewers there then to the IP switch, to the multiplex, and until to, 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 to the final deliver. So uh, when we talk about a total and, and a pure software uh, solution, we, uh, we can uh, get rid of those silos. We are talking about a full IP solution, which can be expanded and support legacy uh, SDI inputs, SDI ASI or FF, RF inputs through uh, the usage of PCI boards. Uh, this solution also supports Zixi, CMF, uh, SDI over IP. And then we can, we can talk about having just one solution instead of a lot of silos. And this solution can deliver everything. So you can receive the content on the software. This software also can, can, can do the transcoding, can do the stat MOOCs and can deliver it to the output, to uh, 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 a um, modulator, whatever. So it's easier to operate that. So uh, as it's a software solution, it does not have uh, depreciation. It's easier to, to, to put new features when you need a new codec or when you need uh, some uh, closed caption feature. Uh, anything that you need um, that would make you to uh, reprogram a FPGA board or create a new hardware for that. We are talking about software. It's much more easier to put that on market. The time that you need to, to deliver that, to develop that, it's much, it's much less than you would spend with a hardware-based solution. And also, we support any kind of CPU, any kind of cloud. So you have this flexibility. You can put the software to run whichever you want to, to use it. And also, we have uh, some elasticity on this. So we can have... Uh, we can like talking about ultra HD, you could have like a super premium quality or you can have more than one server per one. You can have one U3G with a superb quality or you can have a good quality one, but you can have it in, in two or more, more uh, uh, channels in the same hardware. So you could choose like, okay, I want to have two uh, U3TG per, per server, or I can have one with the best possible quality that I, that I could in just one server. Uh, and also um, you, can, you can operate that on cloud as well. So you, can, you don't need to have everything on your um, premises. You can, uh, put some, some parts of your operation off-premises. If you have a huge load, if you need to 
to launch a new channel or if you have a to transcode a, a new VOD catalog, you can use your your pro, your uh, private uh, pre, your private cloud or your premises and offload some some trans, some some process to a third third party cloud to a, a, a public cloud. So uh, and as our uh, software, we are doing everything on microservices architecture. This means that we don't need to have a um, a single application per each kind of product. So if I have, I, I just need, for instance, a transcoding uh, service or I just need a um, stitching service or a probing service, I don't need to have the full system on one, uh, on one box. So you can, adapt some some parts um, you can adapt uh, your we can adapt the software to your usage to your use case uh, taking parts or the specific parts that we need to run at that moment uh, what, what this translates uh, this translates to savings on CPU cycles since I don't need to run like let's say Today I need to run a, a full solution that has a database, a front end, the back end, and a lot of stuff. So in this case, as we are as we are microservices, as we have microservice architecture, I don't need to have a database on each server. I can have just one or two for redundancy, uh, and then the back end and the front end in one or two services just for redundancy, and then everything else. Every other, every uh, CPU possible that I have available, I could use that for uh, transcoding or for some other kind of processing, for per processing or whatever. So it, it's, we can optimize this CPU cycle, the CPU cost by using that kind of architecture. And this will reduce the number of servers that you need on your premises. You can save on CapEx. Uh, as you have less servers, you don't need to, your, your operation will be easier uh, since you don't need to monitor and check server by server. Just list, just, you don't have like 100 server or more, just have less servers. Um, you can optimize your cloud. When you go to cloud, you know that you have some more costs involved. So if you just use the cloud with the thing that we really we really need use on it when we offload some some processing we are not offloading the a full machine to it we are not offloading a database a front end the back end etc we are just offloading the processing the video process for instance so i can uh i can keep my cloud usage low i don't need to put everything on it and, and let it run forever. I just need to uh, offload my encoding process and then when it ends, we can shut that encoder down and bring that everything to, to back to your on-premises uh, uh, structure. And also, um, as we use uh, less, less servers, uh, we are... Um, uh, we, as we use less servers, we can increase the density. We can, uh, uh, let's say that the footprint of uh, the consumption, the the cooling facility, the cooling um, potency, uh, the, air con the air conditioning system will be will be less powerful than to, than we 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 had it, it today, for instance. Uh, and also, as it's a software, we are writing the Moore's law. So we can actually we can we can um, we can benefit from it a lot. So if today I can like I can have a server, the current server can run like two two U three D two U three D services. Maybe in two years I could have this. Uh, I could have a. a, a, a a similar server, a new version one, of course, but that could run three or up to four uh, services. So as it's a software, you can move it, you can move it around, the licenses are perpetual, so you can use it wherever you want. So you can change the servers, you can go to cloud, you can do wherever, uh, uh, we are, uh, let's say we are very flexible 
on this. Um, saving through new technologies. Okay, uh, let's start with HVC. Okay, HVC is not, uh, let's say, a new technology, but uh, I, I mean, we, we, we have seen some uh, new uh, deployments on HVC, but most cases are still on MPEG-2 or MPEG-4 because of legacy uh, set-up boxes, uh, we need more powerful device. But when you talk about 4K resolution, you need to go on HVC. But the idea from HVC is to have up to 50% comparing to 8264. So it's something that it's already there we can use today and this can apply uh, as a as a um, a savings when you talk about bitrate savings if you talk about the a cable operator or dth operator you can launch <laughs> if you have 50 percent comparing to 8264 you have you could have double of uh, of services on it it's uh it's already proven we we have some some uh, customers using that some ISPs service providers uh, contribution links we have a lot uh, what I, I've seen a lot it's contribution links with HVC when you talk about CDN as well we have OTT delivery we can have less profiles we can save uh, up to seventy five percent of uh, traffic and cache and storage and whatever so it's a it's a technology it's not so new but you can still use it to, to, to benefit from savings uh, on, on transcoding, on, 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 sorry, on, on delivering. Also, we have the SHTVC. Uh, it's something useful for ATSC 3.0. Uh, the SHTVC, it's a way to encode. At the same time, you have a 8D, a normal ATG one in ATVC, and we have a uh, enhanced layer, U3D with ATR and everything else. You can guarantee that you always deliver the ATG on a robust uh, signal. It will be everyone will have uh, access to the ATG system, to the ATG content, and the others that can receive the enhanced layer can have access to. To the better layer and can watch uh, the same content, the same channel in, in 4K. Uh, this is something new, uh, something that is being deployed for ATSC 3.0. Uh, but it's also a new way to to show that we can uh, with new technologies. When you are talking about ATCC, we are talking about a single uh, frequency. We cannot go more than that frequency. And you can have like two channels there with 4K and with a, a, a better compression quality. We can deliver. We can deliver that. You could not. Maybe you could not deliver a, a, the inset layer if you had to use most of the bit rate just for the HD content. And also, another technology is um, let's say this is new, really new, is the AV1 codec. It's a royalty fee codec uh, that is to save up to 50% comparing to 8264. ATEM is one of uh, their uh, of, uh, participates on this, on this, on this, uh, uh, on this forum. It's part of the Alliance for Open Media. Uh, we are seeing already some, some device supporting this AV1. It has support to U3D and HDR. Uh, we have on this Alliance for Open Media, we have a group just to avoid the, uh, the patent infringements. And in the case we have a lawsuit, we have a group uh, behind of that, we'll support everyone. So it's another way, it's uh, let's say, it's an alternative to HEVC. Uh, and also to re re reduce, uh, and let's say at the, the same the same level, it will give you saves at the same level. Uh, do you mitigate some risks that you may have with uh, HVC? Also, the the idea of the HVC is to have a better quality, a better visual quality than HVC. The V1, it's already better than the VVC. And the idea is to have the same or better quality, a visual better, a better visual quality than HVC. 
And okay, what I'm talking about those new technologies is that we at the time we uh, develop, we improve our codecs, but we don't uh, we don't choose a codec to deliver to the customer. We work with all codecs. So we already have MPEG-2, MPEG-4, ATVC, SATVC, AV1, and we also work on uh, with um, the standardization groups for AVC, for VVC, AV2, uh, the ones that could um, could attend the last uh, presentation from SASAM could see that we are working on a lot of the we are working a lot on those on those groups providing. Uh, um, the first versions of the encoders for those kind of uh, new codecs. So we are still uh, adopting the, uh, what I'm seeing that we they have customers still adopting HVC or AV1, and we are talking our, and we are already talking about the evolution, the AVC, the VVC, the AV2. So ATEM is ATEM Titan software is hardware agnostic and cloud agnostic, and we are codec agnostic so we don't care which codec the customer will choose we hope that you choose the one that best fit your your needs so if you need HVC, you have HVC. if you need mpeg2 avc av1 you have it and also another way how we can help you save the, the cost through partnership usually we have the standard, uh, the industry standard is to offer a business model based on project. So we can offer that. We offer perpetual licenses uh, for SD channels, for AT channel, for u d channels, the support every year. And actually the customers can, can, can source some service on us. This is what uh, I think every, every vendor offers. Uh, but we have an, a next level uh, offer. We can go from provider to partner. We have we offer some multi-year engagement with some customers, the ones that operate the large head ends, the customers that, that have large, large number of channels. So you can have like one, two, three, um, two, three, five, ten years engagement with them. Uh, optionally, they can uh, purchase server from us. Uh, this is uh, totally option for the customer. They can choose the server that they want to use, uh, their preferred vendor, like if they have some uh, best uh, offer or a huge, a huge uh, deal with some some f uh, server vendor they can use. We, we, we are clear and we don't have any problem with that. Uh, but what is most important in this kind of engagement is that the customer, they can grow how they need, if they need more channels, if they need more platforms. And also what I think is most important in this case is that we can align the roadmap, our roadmap with the customer needs. What I mean by that, I mean, if a customer, they, they are launching a new services a new kind of servicing, let's say, on the next year or six months that they need some features, something specific to, to that service. In this, in this case, we can adapt our roadmap to fit their need. So if you have, uh, you, if we have something planned to one or two years on our roadmap, we have a five years roadmap already defined it. But if you need something that's planned for one or two years and you need that for like six months or eight months, we can discuss and then we can uh, push it to, to sooner. So we can deliver that when the customer need that. This is, uh, I think is the most important part of this mood uh, year engagement. So uh, a part of every, every codec that you have, every improvement that we, we, we have and we deliver to the customer, they can uh, drive our roadmap to their needs, to a way that best fit their needs. And as an example of uh, this kind of deal, we have a customer, he needed to, to improve their ATSCC 1.0. So we could include the, the Titan Live there, the Titan Live solution. 
uh, we at the, that moment we already improved the, what they needed. They could have two AD plus two SD per carrier, and uh, the start MOOCs integrated. And also, they migrate to the ATC 3.0. It's already uh, ready for them. So uh, when they need to go there, we push it our roadmap to deliver the SHVC, the MPEG EH, uh, the EC4, and some other features that they needed. We could push it too soon, then we were expecting to deliver that. So they can start the deploying the ATSC, the ATSC 3.0 when they need it, they will have everything read. And also have some other features, talking about OTT deliver, that we are delivering, uh, we are creating just for them. That they ask it, we saw that that could be, could be done, and then we are delivering uh, based on their deadlines. So this is, uh, let's say it's the best thing that they could have from us with these, um, multi-year engagement contract and uh, I think that's it uh, thank you sorry if I was speaking too too fast I was worried about the timing <laughs> and okay for, if you have questions so we have uh, some questions on the QA so I think you can see it one of them is asking about uh, if the origin package should be support should should we should be able to support a CQR mode. This was one of the, one of the questions that we have. Maybe maybe mm -hmm. we can go a little bit deeper on this one. We have three mm -hmm. three other questions here. So let, let's go first okay. on this one. Okay. Uh, usually we can do two things. The first one, of course, um, the package must support it. Uh, it must support the CQR mode. Usually what we see we, with the packages that we've been working, they support. And also you can use uh, the Titan to already uh, output a package uh, uh, content. So the Titan can, now, can already deliver a, a dash or HLS package content if they're in applied. So you can, in this case, you could deliver directly that to the origin if you don't need to, if you don't want to use a package or if you have a, like a third party origin, if you want to deliver to a CDN or something like that, you can push it directly to them. Usually they need to support that, but based on the test that we have been doing, they all support it. Okay, I think this is clear. Another question that I have here is like, what kind of uh, cloud providers we, we, we support, we, we can work on? Okay, uh, we have our uh, deplo deployments with a AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. We have some testings on others, uh, but I don't have the, the results yet. We have some kind of uh, demos, uh, POCs running on other cloud providers, but those three that I mentioned are the ones that we have already uh, some deployments and they are in production. Okay, good. And another one is they, they are asking, someone asking about uh, AV1 availability. When, when we, we, I think you explained already on your presentation, but uh, let's say maybe set of boxes will be ready for 2020. Do you want to go a little bit deeper on this one? Yeah, AV1 we, we are at, mm -hmm. we already have some, some set of boxes, uh, some ship sets in this year um but we already have some deployments on 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 streaming platforms we've seen some videos from i think netflix or youtube they have some 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 ev1 content and on the encoding side we already have it for live content for sorry for vod content it's already deployed it's already in production for live, we have a version on the innovation team. We have uh, the production version and we have an innovation version. The innovation version already has this, uh, this codec uh, done and we will put it on, we move it to the production version uh, throughout this year. 
Yeah, there's a question about from Aftab about can software based is software based compression okay and is hardware based compression very stable? Can you explain the difference between those? Uh, well, yeah, the hardware base uh, is stable. Um, when you talk about let's say FPGA and everything, I, I think both are okay. Uh, the point is that when you talk about software compression. Uh, of course, you rely on software on hardware capacity, could be GPU, could be pure CPU. Uh, and uh, I think the difference, the, the biggest difference here, I, I think about the biggest difference here is that when you need to, when you need to have, uh, when you need to create a new feature or you need to go to a new codec, it's much easier, it's much easier to, to have it done Let's say it's much easier or much, or much faster to have it done on a software-based uh, solution than on a hardware-based one. Because on a hardware-based one, uh, if it's, uh, let's say, if you, if you talk about uh, a chipset just for to doing something, if you have a 8264 chipset or a TVC chipset, when you have something new, like AV1, for instance, you need to deliver a new one, a new hardware just to, to, to support that. And let's say that you are today, we are talking about the VVC, VVC and also the, and also the AV2, for instance. Uh, when we start discussing about that, uh, you are right with the first versions that you do, you need to do some, uh, some uh, there is a specific word for that, but it's uh, it's a uh, it's the first version of uh, encoder to prove that you can deliver that and also you can start developing the decoders. So this first one it will take a lot of time to transcode any kind of uh, any kind of uh, of content because it will rely on the current hardware that you have. It's not gonna be uh, optimized. So like one minute video could take like 10 hours or 10 days um, uh, processing that. So you could not do that on a hardware one because you would need to review that hardware often. So if it's a software, it's cheaper to, let's say, uh, there, there's something on design thing that we say is fail fast and fail, uh, uh, fail, it's fail fast. If you need to fail, that you fail with really, really fast. So if you need to develop something, it's better to go the first version on software and okay, we need to review the, the, uh, the standard, then we can apply something different, then we can review the software and develop it again and again and again until you have it done. So when you have the, the specification done, you most probably have the software done and then you can start uh, reviewing the hardware. So the so time yeah, that you need- feature. Feature proof, let's say, feature proof yeah, technology yeah. and software based. You can use this on premises. If you want to migrate this to the cloud later on, you can do it. So that's that's uh, the way that we see. Yeah, the hardware is, is I agree, is really, really stable. Uh, but you need to you need to go future proof or really fast development and put more things really fast. It's better to have a, a software one. I have another question here, Fabio, about the Dockerize the solution. How about uh, what about the correct solution? So that's another, another well, question. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, when you have a Dockerize solution, you can use uh, Kubernetes to to deploy that. Uh, usually, the Dockerize solution, you can have it uh, in like all in one. You can have the equipment completely on this uh, on a, on a Docker like have a MOOCs inside a Docker or an encoder inside a Docker. And then you can push it to your, uh, let's say your on-premises cloud, or you can offload the full machine to that. Um, let's say we can keep uh, the density that we have with the Dockerized solution, the bare metal solutions, uh, let's say basically the same. We don't have much benefit because of the virtualized, uh, the hyper, let's say the, hyper, the hypervisor, the VM, it will not penalize you so much on, on CPU cycles. Uh, but yeah, I, I think the Dockerized solutions, basically you could uh, Dockerize everything that you have. So you can, you can have the full solution in a Docker, or you could have that, uh, 
you could have that uh, small pieces on Docker's. So yeah, I think the last the last question there was about the density. Already, I think you already uh, replied that one uh, right now, and I think we have a few minutes to finish. We have uh, one last question about the CQR again. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, the CQR in this case is uh, most regarding video. However, we have some other features that we works, which is uh, we call VBR reservation. When you talk about audio, when you have like, if you don't need to have a CQR, you need to go VB, CBR, for instance, or have stat MOOCs or, or some other application. When you talk about, uh, let's say that you have Adobe or some other uh, audio codec that can Sometimes ha that sometimes has some uh, mute periods that you don't need to have a uh, bitrate on that. What you can do is we can use uh, that amount of bitrate that you are not using for audio. Uh, since it's, a, uh, it's the kind of tidied. So you can use that bitrate that you are not using for the audio and we can put that, that amount, that bitrate for video. So when you go CQR, we talk always about video only, but we have some other features that we can, um, we can apply when you are talking about uh, when we want to save or put more content for, for put more bitrate for video. We can rely on some periods that we don't have, even some tables when we don't have SI or PSI tables at that moment or when we don't have to push audio on that moment, we can use that bitrate for, for video as well. But when you go on CQR, usually the bitrate uh, for the, the audio bitrate is, uh, is always CBR. 